<clears throat> well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. I hope that y'all are doing great tonight. I know many people are handing out candy. I have Gracie with me. Gracie and I are not handing out candy tonight. She's fixing a leaf. She just goes, hey, I uh, just wanted y'all to see how wonderful I am. Do you want in my lap? This cat does not like to be held. She's not a holding cat. Can you say hi? Say hi. My name's Gracie. Say hi. Adios. Yeah. I'm sorry I touched you. <laughs> She's not one that wants to be carried around, you know, and taken places. Anyway. All right. Well, my hair is sticking out in a hundred different directions. I came home and put it in a ponytail. And that's what I get when I do that. But it was hot. It was hot this afternoon. And now it's cool. And now I'm drinking hot lemonade. And it's crazy. Well, I hope you had an awesome day today. We had an awesome day today. We, uh, we went to church and we had pastor appreciation. Sunday we had potluck. And you know what? We haven't had a lot of potlucks since last year. We used to have potlucks at least three or four times a year. You know, sometimes on the months that had five Sundays, we would have potlucks. But since COVID, we have not been having a lot of potlucks. We were having community dinners one day during the week, and we haven't been doing that either. Maybe we can get back to that, but. Anyway, it was good to break bread with our church family and to appreciate someone who puts so much time and effort into his job and goes above and beyond. And that is our pastor and his wife is the same and they are training their two boys to be servants also. And that's so awesome. That is so important. So tonight we're going to do Psalm 39. And uh, I realize that a lot of people are out either taking their kids trick-or-treating or, or uh, handing out trick-or-treat candy at their house. But I just wanted to jump on here. You know, God has a message for us today. I heard a great message today at church um, about how Jesus was born and what we believe about Jesus and who Jesus is and kind of goes along the lines of what we talked about last night, that Jesus is the only way, you know, Jesus is the only way to God. He is the only path to God. And, um, anyway, let's pray. Let's go to God and pray. Welcome. Welcome if you're new. I've been doing this ministry since last year uh, during COVID. I started about March doing uh, just what I think God is laying on my heart. I am no biblical scholar. I have learned by reading God's word and by attending Sunday school and by going to church and um, the discernment of the Holy Spirit. Anyway, but you are welcome here, and if you came here, then God has a word for you, because I only read out of his word. I don't just get up here and talk about things that I think are right. I try to pull out of God's word, so let's pray. God, we just come to you, and we thank you. We thank you for all the many things that you do for us, God, just like we were talking about in Sunday school today. A million little miracles, miracles that we don't even see, we don't even know that they happened. God, but you are so good and you are so great and you are so awesome. You love us and you want to take care of us, God. We uh, thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our protector, our provider, our shelter in the storm. Thank you for being our strength and our refuge. You are the great Jehovah. You are the great I am. And you are our everlasting father. 
You are the righteous judge, though, and you will judge all unrighteousness according to your truth, not, not the world's truth, but your truth. But God, you are also loving and kind and compassionate and caring God. You are faithful, you are trustworthy, and you are patient. You want none to perish. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears and their hearts to the truth, God. That you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they can be saved. God, we pray for the prodigals to return, to repent, to be reconciled, God. We pray for all the disasters that are going on, God. We just pray. We just pray that you would be with these people affected, God. That you would send someone to be the hands and feet, the loving compassion of Jesus. God, that you would... Um, that you would move in their hearts, that they would feel your presence, God. And we pray for all the sick people. We just pray that you would open, that you would heal their bodies, God, that you would strengthen their families, that they would trust your process of healing, God. We pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them, God, that they would also feel your presence. God, that you would give them discernment going forward. And God, we just uh, we pray for all these people that are right up against the wall on this vaccine, on this unconstitutional <clears throat> mandate, God. People that were heroes last year that were putting their life on the line every day for a disease that they knew nothing about, God. Many of them getting sick, many of their co-workers dying. God, we just pray. We pray for strength for them. We pray that if they do lose their jobs, God, that it will be a boomerang back on their employees. That, God, they will be blessed for standing up for truth. That they will receive the blessings. That they will receive better jobs, God. I just pray. I pray for truth to reign in that situation. And maybe at the last minute, people will see how catastrophic it will be. And we'll go, no, we're not going to do that. I pray that companies will stand on their, their values also. God, I just pray for truth to rule above all the lies that we have been told. God, that truth would reign, that it would reign victorious that you would give us the discernment so that we could sift the truth from the lies, God. That you would just give us the wisdom so that we can do that. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, all right, my pray and share warriors. I hope you had an awesome Sunday today. Tomorrow's Monday. We get to start our week all over tomorrow. All right, Psalm 39 is not as long as Psalm 37 was. And I really did not write anything on Facebook today because um, I did share a concert this morning because I was listening to it and I just wanted to bless somebody with it. But I didn't even share it on my page. I just shared it um, on my main page. So Psalm 39 says, Prayer for Wisdom and Forgiveness. To the chief musician, to Jeduthun, Jeduthun, a psalm of David. So this is another psalm of David. I said, I will guard my ways, lest I sin with my tongue. I will restrain my mouth with a muzzle. While the wicked are before me, I was mute with silence. I held my peace even from good, and my sorrow was stirred up. My heart was hot within me. While I was musing, the fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. Lord, make me to know my end, 
and what is the measure of my days, that I may know how frail I am. Indeed, you have made my days as handbreadths, and my age is nothing before you. Certainly every man at his best state is but vapor. Surely every man walks about like a shadow. Surely they busy themselves in vain. He heaps up riches and does not know who will gather them. Okay, so again, he's talking about that he will guard his ways lest he sins with his tongue, that he will restrain his mouth with a muzzle while the wicked are before me. He held his peace even from good, and his sorrow was stirred up. Then he spoke with his tongue. And then he's talking about how long his life is. And really, there's only one that knows how long our life is, and that's God. He knows we have an arrival date and we have a departure date. And he is the only one that is in control of those two dates. We don't know when they are. Just like we don't know when he's going to send Jesus back to get us. And we're not supposed to try to figure it out either. Because he'll send him when he gets ready. He says, and now, Lord, what do I wait for? My hope is in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the reproach of the foolish. I was mute. I did not open my mouth because it was you who did it. Remove your plague from me. I am consumed by the blow of your hand. When with rebukes you correct man for iniquity, you make his beauty melt away like a moth. Surely every man is vapor again. The the um the brevity of life, you know, it's like a vapor. It doesn't last forever. Our lives here on this earth do not last forever. Our lives eternally last forever. We will eternally live. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Do not be silent at my tears. For I am a stranger with you, a sojourner as all my fathers were. Remove your, your gaze from me that I may regain strength before I go away and am no more. And I'm sorry I started a little early tonight. Gracie Lou and I got a little bit bored sitting here waiting. So we started early. All right, well, let's, um, let's read what the study part of my Bible has to say. Okay. It says the transitory nature of life is described as a vapor, a shadow. The suffering psalmist searched to find the meaning of this brief time on earth. The days of life are as handbreadths, a reference to the width of four fingers. So, I guess that, I guess that's a handbreadth. Um, the tone is similar to that of Ecclesiastes, but here the psalmist affirmed that his only hope rested in the Lord and his forgiveness. So, I've been singing this song all day, off and on, because I sing other ones in between. Wait on the Lord. He will renew your strength, so wait on Him. That's what I keep singing over and over again. That's all I know of that song. Um, there's another part of it that says that every, every tribe and tongue, every, I don't know, I forgot the rest of it, but anyway, we must wait on the Lord. 
We must wait on him, and in our waiting, there is plenty to do while we wait. We do not need to just be sitting around waiting for Jesus to come back and get us because there are many people that are in a burning building and they don't even realize it. And so we need to tell them that Jesus is the good news and that they don't have to stay in that burning building, that they can get out. They have freedom. They can choose. They can choose Jesus as their savior. So the next thing I'm going to do is a salvation message. And I did a really short one last night. I don't remember why I did a really short one last night. But I did. I made me some hot lemonade. It is very yummy. But very strong, too. Okay. What salvation message do we want to do? I kind of like this one. It's called the simple gospel. God's simple plan of salvation. Because really man tries to make salvation complicated, but it's really not complicated. It's really pretty easy. Man tries to say, I've got to get my life cleaned up before I go, uh, before I come to Jesus and get saved. But that is backwards because you come to Jesus first and Jesus will change the things that are not pleasing to God. So you don't have to worry about it. You just have to be willing. So this says, my friend, this plan of salvation saved me. I'm concerned about your soul. You can follow this Bible plan and be saved too. So that's the good news is that anybody, this is available for anybody. There is no body on this earth that God does not extend this invitation to. Everyone gets the opportunity, but we get to choose. We can choose to accept or choose not to accept. And not even trying to choose is not accepting. So let me read this to you. My friend, I am asking you the most important question of life. Your joy or your sorrow for all eternity depends on your answer. The question is, are you saved? It is not a question of how good you are nor if you are a church member, but are you saved? Are you sure you will go to heaven when you die? God says in order to go to heaven, you must be born again. In John 37, Jesus said to Nicodemus, ye must be born again. In the Bible, God gives us the plan of how to be born again, which means to be saved. His plan is simple. You can be saved today. So how? First, my friend, you must realize you are a sinner, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 Because you are a sinner, you are condemned to death, for the wages, payment of sin is death. Romans 6.23 This includes eternal separation from God in hell. It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Hebrews 9.27 But God loved you so much, he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, to bear your sin and die in your place. He hath made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5.21 Jesus had to shed his blood and die, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. Leviticus 17.11 Without shedding of blood is no remission or pardon. Hebrews 9.22 God commandeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5.8 Although we cannot understand how God said my sins and your sins were laid upon Jesus and he died in our place, 
He became our substitute. It is true, God cannot lie. My friend, God commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Acts 17.30 This repentance is a change of mind that agrees with God that one is a sinner and also agrees with what Jesus did for us on the cross. In Acts 16.30-31, the Philippian jailer asked Paul and Silas, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Simply believe on him as the one who bore our sin, died in your place, bore your sin, died in your place, was buried, and when God resurrected, in whom God resurrected, his resurrection powerfully assures that the believer can claim everlasting life when Jesus is received as Savior. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. John 1, 12. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 13. Who, whosoever includes you shall be saved means not maybe nor can but shall shall be saved surely you realize you're a sinner right now wherever you are repenting lift your heart to god in prayer in luke 18:13 the sinner prayed god be merciful to me a sinner just pray and i'm going to leave a space so you can do this O oh God, I know I am a sinner. I believe Jesus was my substitute when he died on the cross. I believe his shed blood, death, burial, and resurrection were for me. I now receive him as my Savior. I thank you for the forgiveness of my sins, the gift of salvation in everlasting life because of your merciful grace. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So just take God at his word and claim his salvation by faith. Believe and you will be saved. No church, no lodge, no good works can save you. Remember, God does the saving, all of it. God's simple plan of salvation is you are a sinner. Therefore, unless you believe on Jesus, who died in your place, you will spend eternity in hell. If you believe on him as your crucified, buried, and risen Savior, you receive forgiveness for all of your sins and his gift of eternal salvation by faith. You say, surely it cannot be that simple. Yes, that simple. It is scriptural. It is God's plan. My friend, believe on Jesus and receive him as Savior today. If his plan is not perfectly clear, read this tract over and over without laying it down until you understand it. Your soul is worth more than all the world. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Mark 8.36, be sure you are saved. If you lose your soul, you, you miss heaven and lose all. Please let God save you this very moment. God's power will save you, keep you saved, and enable you to live a victorious Christian life. That there hath no temptation taken you, but such as in 
is common to man, but God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. 1 Corinthians 10.13 do not trust your feelings, they change. Stand on God's promises. They never change. After you are saved, there are three things to practice daily for spiritual growth. Pray, which is talking to God. Read your Bible. God talks to you. Witness, you talk for God. You should be baptized in obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ as a public testimony of your salvation, and then unite with a Bible-believing church without delay. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of the Lord, 2 Timothy 1, 8. Whoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven, Matthew ten thirty two. So if you did accept Jesus as your Savior tonight, as we read that, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. You, The angels are rejoicing, and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus Christ, His Son. And like like the, the um, tract said, Read your Bible every day. Pray to God every day and praise and look for a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church. That is what we have. We go to the Walnut Springs Baptist Church. I have been going there for over 30 years. I got saved there. It is my church family. So you are welcome to come to our church anytime. You are in Walnut Springs, Texas. Mm. Not very hot anymore. Not very strong, though. All right, well, it is time for me to do God's blessing and to pray and get off of here. Mm. My nose itches. Sorry. So, in Numbers 6 24 through 26, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Yes, we all need peace. It is a real peace that comes through Jesus, though. There may be some false pieces out there. Don't fall for those. Only the Jesus, only the peace that comes through Jesus that passes all understanding. People can't even understand it. And it is so good. All right, well, let's pray. I miss my friend Josie. She doesn't come to see me anymore. She missed a lot of work, and she is working a lot of hours now that she's back at work. But I miss her. Okay, God, we just come to you and we thank you. We praise you, God, for this time that you um, help us to understand your word. God, we just praise you for all the many things that you do in our lives. And God, we just pray that you will help us to walk out in boldness, sharing your truths and sharing the gospel of Jesus. That you would help us to be the hands and feet of Jesus and the loving compassion of Jesus everywhere we go. God, I just pray for everybody and their families that you would bless them abundantly. That you would provide for them and protect them and lead and guide them, God. That they would be drawn closer to you every day, God. Thank you for giving us your son to save our souls and to usher us into an eternal home. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, all right. I hope you have an awesome tonight and an awesome um, tomorrow, which is Monday. So much love. And Gracie took off. Much love and cyber hugs. Till I see you again. Good night.